Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is at it again with yet another unethical misuse of taxpayer dollars and with a new scandal, a shady $4.8 million real estate deal involving none other than Trudeau's close personal friend. While everyday Canadians struggle to make ends meet amidst skyrocketing inflation, Trudeau seems to think public money makes the perfect gift for pals. Talk about cronism at its finest. This questionable purchase reeks of backdoor deals and sheer mismanagement of funds meant to benefit all Canadians. Trudeau has some serious explaining to do about how exactly this all went down. The Prime Minister's ethical lapses keep growing exponentially along with Canadians' distrust in his leadership. Is anyone really surprised anymore by Trudeau's lack of transparency and accountability? Because we're not. It's just more evidence that sunny ways don't always equate to ethical ways in Trudeau's world. You won't want to miss how this episode unfolds. Ethics and sunny ways don't seem to go hand in hand for Trudeau. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Yet another real estate scandal is rocking the Trudeau government, as revelations emerge that the Prime Minister has quietly approved a lucrative land deal benefiting one of his closest confidants. Records show the opaque Trudeau cabinet signed off on having the National Capital Commission purchase a valuable property in downtown Ottawa, partially owned by Liberal insider Tom Pitfield. While Trudeau claims to have no involvement, it strains credibility that he was removed from such a suspiciously well-timed transaction between his friend and agencies under his command. Pitfield has long enjoyed special privileges due to his cozy relationship with the Prime Minister. From campaign work to plum advisory posts, Pitfield has been among the biggest beneficiaries of Trudeau's largesse. Now it seems that generosity has extended to enriching Pitfield through an inside land flip just blocks from Parliament Hill. With the property's value undoubtedly boosted by government proximity, this sure looks like a classic cash-out by a liberal-connected player with impeccably timed insider knowledge. Yet again, Canadians are left questioning whether their prime minister views public resources as a piggy bank to be raided whenever convenient to grease the palms of well-connected friends. Coming after past ethical lapses like the Aga Khan affair, this deal smacks of the entitlement and lack of transparency that have become Trudeau's most corrosive weaknesses. If a flimsy explanations don't satisfy, perhaps the ethics commissioner should launch a new probe into this prime piece of liberal cronyism. The fact that Trudeau claims he was not involved with approving this deal is hard to believe. His close ties to Pitfield and the property's proximity to Parliament Hill suggests Trudeau likely used his influence to push this purchase through. While Trudeau enriches his inner circle through questionable deals like this, he continues to neglect the many crises facing Canadians. From out-of-control inflation to strained healthcare systems, Trudeau seems more focused on helping his well-connected friends than addressing the real concerns of average Canadians. But hey, why worry about strained healthcare systems or the ballooning cost of housing when you can buy up Ottawa real estate for your inner circle instead? This property purchased wasted millions of taxpayer funds that could have been better spent on getting inflation under control or improving healthcare. It's clear Trudeau has misplaced priorities by funding this cronyism while many Canadians struggle. Trudeau should not be using taxpayer money as his personal piggy bank to thank his staffers and advisors. Meanwhile, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities recently met with Trudeau in Calgary to request additional direct funding for growing cities across the country. It's funny to think that Trudeau would immediately grant their wishes like he does for his buddies. However, Trudeau appeared reluctant to commit to increased municipal funding, instead deflecting responsibility onto the provinces. While Trudeau claims his government has already provided substantial housing and transit funding, local leaders argue this is insufficient to meet their growing infrastructure needs. Trudeau seems unwilling to fully address the FCM's direct funding request. His focus remains on flashy national announcements over responding to local needs. Furthermore, Trudeau argues provinces must also increase their municipal funding contributions. However, some provinces like Alberta are actually restricting local government spending flexibility. How can the municipalities oblige to huge pumping of taxes for the federal government while they are already lacking income? The PM has some audacity to ask more from Canadians without showing any outcomes. Trudeau cannot justify neglecting municipalities just because provinces are not stepping up either. His finger-pointing does nothing to solve the urgent funding issues raised by local leaders across Canada. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to take questions from people here because the most important thing, I mean, yes, 11 years ago I showed up, gave a big speech and everyone's like, okay, that's great. Um, 
it's not just about the speeches. Uh, what I've discovered over the past you know, almost dozen years of engaging and working in partnership, not just here at FCM, but with all of you across the country, is it's the conversations, it's the ideas, uh, it's the solutions that you're putting forward because you are right there on the front lines of supporting Canadians, investing, uh, living in the communities alongside them, and uh, responding to a variety of challenges across the country. Uh, the municipal order of government is unbelievably important in building a stronger Canada. So I am so glad to be here to hear from all of you and talk with all of you as I did through two sessions and now a, a third big public session where there's about 90 people at the, uh, at the mic, so I'm going to try and uh, be very quick in my answers. Uh, yes, I support the idea of a municipal growth framework. Uh, there's no question about it. But I've been supporting this idea for 10 years now. Um, we stepped up in 2015 as, as a federal government to say the federal government needs to get back in the business of investing directly in municipalities. And we did. We not just continued with now the, the, uh, the Canada Community Building Fund, the former gas tax transfers up to $2.4 uh, billion a year, um, but we've invested massively in uh, infrastructure, whether it's public transit or, or other municipal infrastructures. We're showing up with billions on uh, municipal, uh, municipal housing programs. Uh, we're stepping up on things like daycare that has a direct impact on you, but we're doing an awful lot of things as we step up. And a lot of what we're trying to do is make sure that the provinces step up as well as we show up. But we've all seen that there are certain provinces that are actually pulling back, saying, oh, if the federal government's stepping up, well, then we don't have to spend as much on municipalities. And what our plan was is to be additive because we know we needed more investment in municipalities. So yes, as a federal government, we will always be there to look for doing more, to try and invest more, to make sure that you're able to deliver the services that Canadians rely on. Because you, what's the, what's the proportions? You deliver 90% of the services on 20% of the revenue or something like that. It's, you need to be able to do more for cities and the federal government can be there, but we need the provinces to be there as well. I mean, right here in Alberta, the provincial government has decided that no, not only do they not want to, to uh, uh, the, the federal government to be investing in, in their municipalities, it should be illegal for the federal government to invest in their municipalities. It's not like they're planning on replacing that lost revenue from the federal government. That would be an entirely different story. That's going in the wrong direction. So I'm happy to talk with you and to continue fighting for better funding formulas for municipalities. But we have to make sure that the provinces are there at the table. No matter how much we try to work around it, municipalities are creations and responsibility uh, of the provinces according to their, our constitution. And I hear the request for this and we need some more operational funding, we need some more infrastructure. We'll try and help in all sorts of ways we can. But the provinces have to be stepping up more, and that's what we're going to work together on to make sure uh, that the provinces are there, taking on their responsibility for all the growth and all the citizens of their provinces that you directly serve and create every single day. Uh, stepped up with a lot of programs for small municipalities, and that's part of why when we put $4 billion towards the Housing Accelerator Fund, uh, we signed with a lot of smaller communities, uh, but there were many communities that we just didn't, we ran out of money for, which is why in the most recent budget, we added another $400 million, and we're going to be making sure uh, that we're coming and knocking on your door. You know what we're asking of you, to be as ambitious as possible in uh, how you're going to change the way they're building housing and communities, because the Housing Accelerator Fund is all about that. It's about encouraging uh, people to change the way they build housing, to change zoning, to change densification rules, to use public land differently. Uh, this is the pressure that we're putting on the entire system across the country. Uh, and if you're showing up with ambition, we'll show up uh, with uh, money to sign a deal. In particular, rural municipalities feel caught between provincial and federal governments when seeking infrastructure funding. For example, Ponoka County faces nearly $20 million in upcoming bridge repairs with no way to fund these large capital projects. Their tax base was designed in the 1800s and cannot support major new expenditures. However, higher levels of government seem oblivious to these local challenges. 
This directly impacts homeowners unlike deficits, which pass costs to future taxpayers. Local governments need more federal support to avoid overburdening their residents. Furthermore, the lack of federal infrastructure funding is putting some Alberta municipalities at risk of bankruptcy. The rural municipalities of Alberta president warns they are barely staying financially afloat. Trudeau cannot keep ignoring these real concerns in communities across Canada. His flashy announcements do nothing for municipalities on the brink of insolvency. In Nova Scotia, Halifax mayor also argued that relying solely on property taxes to fund municipal growth is outdated. Property taxes were developed before Confederation and cannot support modern infrastructure needs. He must recognize why a new municipal funding framework is essential. The federal government has a responsibility to support municipalities facing major growth pressures. In summary, Trudeau needs to answer tough questions about this real estate deal and explain his full involvement. Canadians deserve the truth about why millions in public funds have been used to purchase property from the Prime Minister's inner circle. True leadership requires transparency and accountability instead of secrecy and favoritism. While Canada's municipalities require a strong federal funding partner to maintain their infrastructure, Trudeau cannot expect property taxes alone to cover billions in upgrades. His flashy pronouncements fail to help local governments on the front lines dealing with growth and deteriorating assets. The time has come for direct federal support. Local leaders should continue pressing Trudeau and keep this funding issue in the national spotlight where it belongs. Canadians deserve properly funded communities, not more empty platitudes from the Prime Minister. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau is secretly funding his close buddies regarding all scandals lately? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.